Are you tired of sharing files over an USB stick? Or copying files over from a NAS drive? Or even using an internet connection, although the devices are inches apart from each other? Well, then I have good news for you, because there is a way how you can share gigabytes of files without using internet, without using an S drive, and without using an USB stick. And all of this platform independent, no wires, no shared drives, only two devices using a Wi-Fi direct connection, and a tool called... Flying Carpet. Now before we continue, welcome to the channel, here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description, and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I'm here on the official Flying Carpet GitHub page, and it says that this can transfer files between Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, and Windows over Wi-Fi. No network infrastructure required, just two devices with Wi-Fi chips in close range. Let's scroll down. You don't even need to have access to a wireless network, because this one works over Wi-Fi Direct. And you can share files with over 2 GB, so basically you don't have a size limit. Down here you can see the screenshots. The first two are for the mobile platform. And down here we have Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Now since different platforms are used, there are also some restrictions. Here is the list. For instance, Apple devices can only transfer to and from Android, Linux, and Windows, as they can no longer programmatically run hotspots. In that cases, use AirDrop. Then it also disables your wireless internet connection while it is in use, because one device has to create its own hotspot. Then macOS sometimes switches back to wireless network during long transfers, which obviously breaks the transfer. For Android, it requires Android 8, API level 26, and some devices are just not supported. Then for Windows, it requires Windows 10 or later. On the Linux side, this was developed for Linux Mint, and it is intended for Debian-based distributions. Other distributions may work as well, but there may be some issues. Now let's see how to install this one. If you're using Android, you can get Flying Carpet on Google Play. If you're using iOS, then use App Store. And if you are on a desktop, as I am, on Linux, Mac or Windows, then go to Releases. Flying Carpet 802 is a version only for Android. And the latest one is Flying Carpet 801. And this one is available for desktop platforms. I'm using Windows, so let's go with the MSI. Download complete. Let's open it. This is the Flying Carpet setup. I will just go with the defaults. Installation completed, launch Flying Carpet, and finish. And here it is. Now let's say I want to transfer a file to this Windows machine. Then here, select Receive. I'm sending the file also from a Windows machine, so select Windows. Then select a destination folder. I will select Downloads. OK. And now, start transfer. Now you will need to allow network access for the Flying Carpet application. If you don't trust the application, then of course don't do it. I trust this one enough, so allow access. Flying Carpet has now started the Wi-Fi hotspot. And here you can see the message box with a password. The same password is also written here. Down here you can also see the network name that was started. And this one is now waiting for connection. Now we need to open Flying Carpet on the second machine, select a file, enter the password, and the transfer will start. So let's do it. I will switch PCs. I am now here on the second machine, and this one is sending the file. So select Send. I am sending to a Windows machine. Now select the files that you want to send. If you want, you can select and send multiple files at once, but I will select only a single one, a big one, which has more than 2 gigabytes. This is actually an ISO image file of a very interesting Linux distro that I've installed. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a macOS lookalike Linux distro named PearOS on a USB drive. So if you want to run a macOS-like Linux distro from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description.
So let's select this one, open. Now we need to enter the password from the receiving machine, which is still waiting for connection. So let's do it. That's it. And start transfer. Now it's sending the file. Down here you can see the progress bar. Perfect. Transfer completed. Now again, I will switch PCs. Let's see if the file is there. Yes, the file is here. Let's take a look at the statistics. Here we have the same output as on the sending side. So we received a file of 2.16 gigabytes and this took 27 seconds. The transfer speed was around 600 megabits per second. If we divide this with 8, we will get megabytes per second. And this is about 80 megabytes per second. My PCs are right next to each other and 80 megabytes per second, not bad at all. Some people claim that it can also go up to 120 megabytes per second, but 80 is good enough for me. Now this is all nice and great, but only if you have devices where flying carpet actually works. For me it worked with those devices that I tried right now, but I also have a third PC where this particular version doesn't work. I know the device is Wi-Fi Direct capable because it works with the previous flying carpet version, but not with this one, version 8. Hopefully this will be fixed in the future, but for now, let me show you how you can use the previous version, but this time on Linux. I am now here on Zorin OS, which is a Linux distribution, and on this one I will receive files from a different Linux machine. So let's download Flying Carpet. This is again the Flying Carpet releases page. As said, the latest version of Flying Carpet doesn't work on this device. The version that worked for me was version 6. Go to Assets. Here is the Linux version, so download it. Download complete. Open the folder. And here it is. Let's make this one executable. Right click on it. Properties. Permissions. Allow this file to run as a program. Check it and close. Now this version doesn't have a GUI. This is just a command line version. So we have to open the terminal to run this one. So let's do it. Right click. Open terminal here. Here is the terminal. And now let's run flying carpet. Here we get examples how we can use it. For instance, we are receiving files. And here you can see how to do it on a Mac. It's also the same for Linux. So let's do flying carpet CLI Linux dash peer. I'm receiving files from another Linux machine. And I want to receive the files inside my downloads folder where I'm currently in. So let's do a dot for the current folder. Execute. Again, flying carpet has created a hotspot and it's waiting for connections. Up here we can see the password that we need to use on the different machine. Again, I will switch machines. I'm now here on the second machine. And here I already downloaded Flying Carpet, the command line version. Let's open the console. Again, let's run Flying Carpet. The example for sending files is this one. Let's try it out. Flying Carpet CLI Linux dash peer. I'm sending the files to another Linux machine and I want to send files from a folder that I have prepared. It contains a few wallpapers. Now to send all those files from the wallpapers folder, go back to the terminal and write the path to the folder. In this case, it's inside my downloads folder and wallpapers. And now to send all the JPEG files from this folder, just write a star dot JPEG and execute. Now we need to enter the password from the receiving machine that we saw previously. So let's do it. That's it. And send. Enter. The transfer started. Perfect. Send completed. All 11 files. I will switch again to the first machine. Back to Zorin OS. And here we can see reception completed. Let's see if the files are there. And yes, here are the wallpapers. So if the latest flying carpet version doesn't work for you, try out the command line version. Maybe it will work. It did for me. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much. And the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. Flying Carpet is one of those programs that you can't really find in the official repository of your Linux distribution. And if you're using an Ubuntu-based distro and you cannot find the package inside the official repositories, then I have good news for you. 
In the previous video, I showed you an Arch-like user repository for Ubuntu named Packstall. So if you want an easy way to get custom packages for your Ubuntu, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.